everyone! I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my channel. If you are watching this on the day or the weekend that it's coming out, then welcome to COVID. Thank you so much for joining me here today, especially when I know that there are about over a hundred videos that are all for COVID for you to choose from. So hopefully you are having fun with all of that. Today is kind of the first full day, I think, of COVID. So that is super, super exciting. For those of you who don't know, if you are just finding me through maybe you're one of my subscribers or you're just finding this video by chance or maybe even after the fact, COVID is something that the costume community has put together because Costume College was unfortunately canceled this year. So we're trying to kind of fill that void. We're not affiliated with Costume College in any way, but we're trying to fill that void that Costume College left behind because it's such a huge and important event to so many of us. So because we're doing this whole COVID thing, somewhere in this video, and I'm not going to tell you where, there is going to be a badge for you to collect uh, if you're into that. So do watch the whole video and get your badge because as far as I know, every COVID video is coming along with a badge. So if you watch all of them, you're going to get a hundred plus badges. There's also various events that are going on outside of the YouTube platform. On Instagram, there's going to be a whole bunch of hashtags, so do be sure to look for those, like a red carpet, a Sunday undies, etc. And also we've got a Discord chat going on so that everyone can kind of join in and hang out and have fun there. I have the links to all of that information down in the description. But you are here for this video, and probably a lot of you are watching this after the fact too, and that's just fine, because this is going to be a fun hair tutorial. After I did my 1940s victory roll tutorial a few weeks ago, which I will link to here and in the description, I mentioned that I was also planning on doing a 1950s sort of pinup glam brush out tutorial. So that is what today is. Mostly this is really kind of a tutorial about how I set my curls and how I get my curls to set. Now we are starting with just really base hair that is doing absolutely nothing. It got rained on yesterday and I have not done anything to it yet this morning so it's really frizzy and lovely. <laughs> and we're going to turn that into 1950s glamour with just a few tools and about a half hour or so. Uh, this is not a quick tutorial, like it's not a quick hairstyle, but it is an easy one. So hopefully you're able to try it. If you do try it and you want to go ahead and like post a picture on Instagram of how your hair came out, please, please tag me. I'm at Lady Rebecca Fashions over on Instagram as well. So please tag me and uh, let me know how it turned out. And also if you happen to have a YouTube platform of any kind and you want to do any of my hair tutorials or anything like that that I teach, let me know if you do like a video of you doing this tutorial. I think that would be so, so much fun. So please let me know. But in the meantime, let's jump into this tutorial. So you're going to need a few things. You're going to need a curling iron. I use, this is Hot Tools brand, and this is a three quarter inch curling iron, the kind with the little clamp, but um, that doesn't really matter. We're not going to use the clamp today. So I tend to set mine, I have very fine hair, I tend to set mine at a 380 temperature because I don't want it to get too hot, but that is entirely up to you and your hair type. So um, do be careful if you have fine hair, don't go too hot. If you have thicker hair, I think you're allowed to go a little hotter or sometimes you really need to go a little hotter. The other thing that you're going to need is some sort of pomade. If you've seen my videos, you know that I love Layrite Pomade. Gosh, they should sponsor me at this point, I feel like. Uh, and I just got a brand new container, so it's their new style. I'm super excited. And uh, you're definitely going to need quite a bit of this to get your 50s look. I also use my little curl clips that look like this. These I got from Sally Beauty Supply. They are just salon care. Though a few of them that are mixed in, I can't even tell them apart, a few of them were actually my grandma's that are vintage, so that feels pretty special. The other thing that you're going to need is a boar hair bristle brush, and also you don't really need it for this one, but it's always good to have a teasing brush with a rat tail 
on the end, especially for making your parts. So that's the other thing you're going to need. And um, if you're like me and you have long hair, since we're doing a faux bob look, you're also gonna need some bobby pins. Not quite this many, but I just got new bobby pins. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to part our hair. I do have a mirror over here, so if I'm looking away from the camera, that's what I'm doing. I part my hair to the side for 1950s hair. As far as I know, most hairstyles involved a side part. Do try to get this as straight as you can. My hair does not like to part straight. Come on, hair. There we go, that's a little better. You're also gonna have to ignore my mega roots right now. I'm thinking about going back to my natural color, which is brown but I don't know how I feel about that. Leave a comment down below on if I should stick with red or if I should let my hair grow out. Okay, now that we've parted our hair, we can actually begin the pomading and curling process. So to begin with, you're gonna wanna take some of your pomade and not too much, just a little bit on your finger. Um, this, we are going to just kind of rub our hands together and run through all of our hair at once. We are going to go back and do more pomade on specific sections as we go. I'm gonna take a little bit more of the pomade and run it through the top sections as well. This is just a good base. And again, we are gonna put more pomade on as we go. Okay, now we can start the actual curling. So you're going to want to take a smallish section right at the front, at the top of your head. This is even maybe a little on the large side, but this size should be okay. And you're gonna take your curling iron and just wrap this hair around your curling iron and hold in place. You want to do this, I do this for about eight seconds. Then slide your hair off of the curl hang iron and clip. Just like that. You can even if you want extra volume, you can scooch it a little over towards your part so that it even gets a little bit of back volume. Now we're going to go ahead and do the same sort of thing to basically the rest of our head, but we're starting with the front of your hair. So take another section. I like to use this much and break this into two sections. So I'll kind of start with the whole thing to begin with so that I know how much I want to break into each and then divide that into two. I'm putting a little bit more pomade on this one. You don't want to do too much pomade that it weighs your hair down, but you also want enough that it's going to make your set stick. And again, wrap this around our curling iron. Do be careful doing your curling iron like this. I don't want you to burn yourself. Um, so make sure you don't hold it like on your scalp and also make sure that you don't touch it with your finger. And when you're sliding it off, use your fingernail. You can get heat gloves and stuff like that also. I haven't actually tried it with a heat glove, but if, uh, especially if you don't have any fingernails or you know they're very short, that may be an option that you want to go to to avoid touching the curling iron with your finger. Definitely try to avoid that because it's really hot. A lot of times when I'm adding additional pomade to each section, I'm literally just tapping the pomade in the container with my finger because it's already got a little bit of the base pomade that we did and it just needs a little bit more to hold it together. So just tap with your finger and then run it down your hair. You'll need it probably more in the back of your hair than in the front, like the back side of your hair, 
because you already probably got enough on the front when you were doing the initial plumbing. Now that we've done this part of our set, let's switch to the other side and then we'll do the rest of the head. On this side, I normally do two curls in the front. And I typically take the wand from behind so that I can see what I'm doing. If your curls start to unwrap as you bring them off the curling iron, just twist them a little as you're holding them. That way you can make sure that you're getting right up to the base of your curl so that you can get the best volume because that's what we're going for here. We're going for volume. Sometimes your curl falls off. We've done the front of our hair. Now, the rest of the hair, it's not as important what direction as that you go. And actually, if you look online at various vintage layouts, you can find directionally where each curl should go to get which end result you want. This is really, this is kind of my basic. So um, feel free to go online and look through some of those diagrams and play around with styles, but this is a really good, just like basic to get the look right, as opposed to you're going for an extreme sculptural look. So give it a try though. So the only other curls that really have specific directions that we're going for are gonna be also at the top of the head, right around the part. And that's just because you want to always make sure you're getting the most volume. So all of these curls are going to curl under because we're going for volume here. Um, particularly at the top of the head. If you have any knots or anything in your hair as you're going, do try to get those out because they're going to interrupt your curl. Don't be alarmed if you hear any sizzling sounds. That's just because of the pomade. You might notice that now that I'm on the back of the crown of my head, I am going backwards with my direction as opposed to going side to side. So you really only need probably about two curls that are going down to the sides, and then you can start working them down to the back, still curling under so that you do get that nice volume. I lost my tail on that one, so I'm actually going to curl the whole thing again. One tip for making sure that you don't lose anything, um, any hair off of your curling iron as you're sliding your curling iron off is to, as you're about to do it, try and get one more wrap so that you can get between the curling iron and your scalp and then just gently tilt towards your scalp with the curling iron as you're grabbing with your nail to slide off. If you find that you've grabbed too much pomade for a certain section of hair, just take your fingers and rub them on the rest of your hair.
Coming back to the side near the part, we're again going to curl this down. There's a couple reasons that I do the front section of my hair first. Uh, one is just to get it out of the way so that we don't, we don't have to worry about accidentally grabbing pieces of the sections when we do the rest of our hair. But two is so that it has the longest time to set. You are going to leave these curls in for at least 15 and preferably 30 minutes. I highly recommend do your curl set first then do your makeup. By the time you're done doing your makeup, your curls will probably be ready. And with that, our setting process is done. So now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to wait for somewhere between 15 to 30 minutes and I will come back when that time has elapsed and then we can take all of my hair out. Alright, it has been a half hour, I've eaten my lunch, and it's now time to let our hair down. I always like to start with the bottom ones just because it's going to be harder to access those if you take down the top ones first. So start with your bottom hair. By giving some time between setting and releasing our curls, we're allowing the curls time to cool into place and remember where we want them to be. We have all of our clips out, but this isn't really a 50s hairstyle now, is it? So now we need to brush out our hair. Now, I tend to not have very good results when I use an actual brush, so I always start with my fingers. I would say be a little bit careful about right up at the front doing the brushing, because especially at the ends, because really we want to keep the ends of the front section uh, still in their little spirals, because we're gonna do some fun things with them. But go ahead and run your fingers through all of the rest of your hair want it to kind of form itself into a wave pattern. You found the CoCovid badge. Scan this QR code or use the code to claim your badge. Instructions are in the description below. I'm going to try the brush. Hopefully I won't brush out my curls entirely, but I do want them to get a little bit smoother. See, this is what sometimes unfortunately happens with the brush, so I'm actually going to wrap that back around my fingers to hope to retain that curl. One of the other things that I like to do at this point is to give myself a little bit of extra volume if it starts to fall down on top. I will take my curling iron and push it up against here so we get a little bit more volume. right at the part. See, it helps. Now it's time to start shaping our hair into what we want it to do. So one of the key things here is that my hair is way too long for a 1950s cut, so we're going to make it into a faux bob. Since this hair in particular got a little sad when I brushed it, which I kind of knew that it would, I am going to curl this back up. The main thing here is to get this shape back into our hair here. 
and I am going to pin that into place with bobby pin. I usually like to do one a little bit lower down as well. So let's just leave this section out right now. Now we're going to take the ends of our hair and we're going to start tucking them up. So you just have to bring them together and kind of bring them up like that and pin them in place. Once we've pinned kind of this side in place, we can figure out what we want this to do. I am again going to curl this back up with my fingers to help it remember what it was doing. And we're going to do another sort of spit curl here and pin in place. Now we can get to continue pinning around the rest of our faux ball. Again, I want to leave a section of hair out that's in the front over here. And you're just pinning here basically right to the base of your neck, right at the base of your hairline to grab it into something. You just want to make sure that you're pinning under the length so that you don't see any pins sticking out. And over here, we're again going to wrap this around our fingers. And pin this in place. I'm going to do two over here as well. When you're doing these little spit curls, you want to kind of um, feel where the hair wants to go. If you feel like your roots are getting a little flat, you can carefully brush them. You can also tease them in the first place if you really weren't getting much volume to begin with. You can tease your roots before um, putting it into the style. But since I did not tease my roots, I'm just going to kind of carefully brush them. I think I may have over pomaded just a little bit based on the lack of volume. Now we've got a lovely 1950s do that was really, although it took some time, it was really quite simple to do. So it's all about doing your curls and making sure that your curls stick and having that pomade in there to really help um, have the thickness to be able to brush everything out and, um, and have it kind of adhere together into its shape. But overall, it's a pretty easy hairstyle to do. It just takes a little bit of time and a little bit of practice. And of course, finish with your favorite accessories. So I do hope you all enjoyed this little tutorial today. I really would love to see you try this hairstyle. So again, please tag me on Instagram or feel free to film a video of you doing this and just tag me and let me know that you did it. I really look forward to seeing what you come up with and maybe what other curl patterns that you come up with as well. Again, I really hope that you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful for you. If you did like this video, please go ahead and make sure you click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a video. I actually have two more videos coming out this weekend for co-COVID, so there's a lot of content coming your way. Tomorrow I will be doing a video on 
how to style a wig into kind of an Edwardian style. And on Sunday I will be doing a video on how to get started in historical costuming because I've had a lot of questions to that point. I have also started a sewing vlog, so you're going to get content from me actually twice a week now here on YouTube, but I do post every day over on Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram, at LadyRebeccaFashions. I hope you're having a wonderful day and that you're having really fun at CoCovid, and happy sewing! Again, I really hope that you enjoyed... Really, kitten? Meow? Come here!